resume tomorrow um, afternoon. All times I have listed here at Eastern time. There's a link you can click through because we've got uh, PowerPoint live going, so you can click on the link to the agenda. Um, the next session will be tomorrow at noon, and it'll be LMS and Microsoft integration in higher education. At this point, I'm going to turn it over to Andrew. Um, thank you very much for presenting. And I can see your slide. Great, thanks. All right, so um, I'm going to talk about today uh, UNCG's transition uh, to a um, to kind of cloud voice through uh, Microsoft Teams. So, just a quick introduction. Um, my name is Andrew Sanders. I'm from the uh, University of North Carolina at Greensboro. Um, I am a systems architect and team lead. Uh, there, um, I've been he, I've been at UNCG for about seven years. Uh, prior to that, I was at um, Appalachian State uh, for five years. Um, and my primary focus uh, at UNCG is on our endpoint management products, uh, so SCCM uh, and Jamf primarily. Um, I also have responsibility for our core um, Microsoft on-prem technologies, uh, primarily. When we talk about that, primarily talking about AD. Uh, and I am also one of our primary M365 admins. Um, my focus right now is on Teams, uh, getting ready to be Exchange and SharePoint. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, just a quick agenda. We're going to go through a little bit of background on this project, kind of why we made this decision, um, uh, kind of where we were and where we are today, um, just to provide a little bit of background. Um, then talk about this project in relation to some other modernization efforts that we have uh, ongoing at UNCG. Um, then talk about the project in particular, this project in particular, some of the um, processes that we went through uh, and kind of where kind of where we ended up. And then talk about some lessons learned, some challenges, um, uh, kind of what went well, those sorts of things. And then we'll probably have some time at the end for some questions if there are uh, any. Um, so jumping right in on some background. So uh, some just general background on where we were. So um, UNCG or ITS at UNCG uh, kicked off a five-year strategy in 2017, and we're kind of ending that that kind of five-year planning cycle as we speak um, and starting a new one. Uh, but kind of the core, kind of the two core premises of premises. Is, wow, uh, of that strategy was mobility and cloud first. So the mobility part of that was really being able to access our our core IT services from any device anywhere, whether the, you know that be your your laptop sitting on our campus or your iPhone, you know, in Germany or wherever you were. So 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 we're really being able to access our services from any device anywhere. And the second part, this second kind of core IT, IT strategy that we've had for the past five years was a cloud first strategy. So um, really thinking about applications in terms of the cloud and how, how we move things to the cloud, how we make things cloud native, um, those sorts of things. And we, we, we really had three um, main efforts that, you know, over the last five years, um, Kind of underneath that that strategic pillar, and that was we completed our migration of our data center to Azure. So we have uh, probably 60 or 65 percent of our um, our uh, infrastructure running in Azure, our servers and those those sorts of things running in Azure. Um, also built a new data warehouse in Power BI and and you know actively engaged in trying to get off of our on-prem data warehousing. Um, products uh, and then actually completing this coming weekend um, is migrating our Oracle stuff to the cloud a combination of OCI uh, and Azure and once that's done then we'll be up to probably 80 or 85 percent of our infrastructure being in the cloud and in, in somebody's cloud whether that be uh, Azure or, or uh, OCI. Um, so kind of where the voice stuff started uh, was really with COVID, and we'll talk about that, you know, in more detail in a couple of minutes. Um, but, um, you know, March 2020, our entire, you know, university went home just like everybody else, um, and it kind of shined a light on our um, 
on our phone services not really being mobile friendly. Um, and and you know, so that involved a lot of people coming to campus one time and forwarding their their phone number to their or forwarding their campus phone number to their cell phone. Um, and it was just not really a good kind of a, a, a good experience. Um, so we talked about the previous five years. So this is kind of what the next kind of two years looks like, two to three years for UNCG looks like. Um, there are kind of six major initiatives going on. Um, the the two the 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 two big ones here are the first one and the last one. Um, so UNCG just kicked off a project to migrate our um, Google and Box services over to M365. So we'll be pulling email and all of our cloud storage from those services into M365. Um, so it'd be a busy you know year year and a half uh, for us uh, doing that. Um, and then the last one, we're switching our entire wire, our entire network infrastructure from Cisco to Juniper. Um, but so those are some huge kind of initiatives that the UNCG have has going on right now. Um, they kind of started kind of with 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 this voice project. We'll talk about that too in a little bit. Um, so kind of where we were uh, with with voice prior to Teams. So we were on Cisco Call Manager that had been in place for a very long time. Um, it was a very traditional phone service uh, with a phone on a desk. Um, we had not made any serious investments into soft phones. Um, we had a limited offering uh, of Cisco IP Communicator, which is, um, a, in my opinion, an absolutely terrible product. Uh, frankly, it's not very friendly. <laughs> it's not 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 very user friendly. Uh, I didn't think. Um, so we 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 had a very very traditional phone service. We had never made efforts to 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 offer a soft phone, right? Cisco offers the Jabber client and offers some different solutions for this, but this was not something we had ever really um, really investigated. Uh, and the the service worked well until we went home, you know, until and, until everybody was sent home because of COVID, right? I mean, we were a very um, brick and mortar campus, right? We didn't have remote work. We didn't have, you know, those things that really necessitated a phone service that moved with you. Um, and then COVID hit and obviously we needed one. Um, and then kind of another kind of interesting fact that kind of steered us towards where we ended up with Teams was the UNCG uh, made a commitment to buy A5 licensing from Microsoft starting in 2018, which of course comes with the licensing Within Teams to um, to to do phone service from within Teams. Um, in 2018, the focus for A5 was really some of the security tools. We really weren't thinking about phone service and Teams and all that stuff back in 2018. Um, it was really about security tools. But you know, it, it, we we had purchased the ability to use phone service through um, Teams back in starting in 2018. So where we were with Cisco. Um, just you know, some stats. Uh, kind of the the big one here. Um, you know, we'll talk about this. I think in the next slide about some costs. Is that um, second to the last bullet points? Uh, three quarters of our phones were into life in 2018. So it would have been a huge financial commitment to to uh, to upgrade all of those phones. Um, which kind of brings us to to the decision to move to Teams. It was really a, a top-down decision. Um, UNCG has a group called the ITESC, which is the IT Executive Steering Committee. This committee is made up of our CIO, our CFO, our provost, and our vice chancellor for enrollment management. So it's basically the four um, the four leaders that report to our chancellor. So very high level. Um, they made the decision in September of 2020 to move us from um, Cisco for, for for calling to to Teams for calling, and the the two main reasons for that were were money. Uh, we already owned the ability to do calling within uh, M365, and we talked about that a second ago. You know, we had purchased A5 licenses in 2018, so we had we had the licenses and we we had the we had what we needed to do to do it in M365, so we were, you know, we were double paying. We were paying Cisco and Microsoft for the same service, um, and to also make this a more mobile-friendly service. Um, you know, like I said earlier, COVID really showed that we that our our voice service was not where it needed to be to provide 
um, uh, what we needed uh, in in terms of the service. Um, so it was really a top down decision, and that that really helped with the with the project later. Um, you know, when we you know obviously met resistance from 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 users because uh, you know we were changing something on them that they didn't want changed. Uh, so now a little bit about kind of how we did the project. Um, so this was one of those projects where you know, the the technology behind this is very easy, um, right? There's you know, this is a cloud service. There there aren't a ton of knobs and switches to to turn. There aren't a ton of configurations. There there isn't a ton of effort that goes into building and creating you know this this service. There isn't a ton of ongoing you know kind of maintenance tasks, uh, you know kind of operational tasks. With this service, right? The 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 technology here is is fairly easy. Um, what was what was the hard part about this project and getting it implemented and getting it done was really about creating a useful service for clients, right? We were we were taking a service that they had used, you know, essentially the same way, you know, for many many years, uh, and transforming it and putting it on their computer. There were a lot of people that were apprehensive about that, and a lot of people that, um, you know, you know, thought that, you know, it was going to be the end of the world because they didn't have a phone on their desk anymore. Um, you know, it, you know, like I said a second ago, we we're really taking a service that, if you think about it conceptually, phone service has not changed a whole lot in 50 years, right? It's a ha it's a handset on your desk that you pick up and dial a number and talk to somebody right and we were we were removing that physical piece of hardware and you know making folks use it on their computer i um, mean there were some people that were not very happy about that um so what our architecture general generally looks like is we're we're doing direct routing in teams we we did not want to port our numbers to microsoft we didn't want to do calling plans there's you know, I could probably talk for an hour on why those decisions were made, um, but that's just where we landed. Uh, it, this was where we landed. Um, so we have a pair of SBCs sitting on our campus um, that take our calls from our carrier and route them to Teams, uh, plus uh, one or two other smaller services. Um, and that's that, and that's just kind of how we do it. Um, and just to kind of like emphasize it a little bit more, right? So the ongoing operational tasks of of assigning out phone numbers, you know, making sure somebody can make a call is really a single PowerShell command where you just tell PowerShell the UPN of the user and the phone number and press enter and that phone number is assigned to a person now and they can use it. So it's very, um, very simple, you know, operationally and and technologically, all right, this, this stuff is not is not is 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 not hard by any stretch of the imagination, but kind of selling it and making people realize that this was a good decision was 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 kind of the challenging part of this uh, process. Uh, so some more licensing talk. Um, the vast majority of our faculty and staff are assigned A5 licenses. We talked about that earlier. Um, our students are all assigned the A5 student use benefit. Um, this does not include phone service. It's one of the few differences between the full faculty license and the student use license. Um, so that necessitated coming up with a strategy for how we did things like student workers. Um, you know, a student sits at a reception desk for you know a couple hours a day answering the phone for a department. Um, or you know, graduate assistants or those kind of student use cases. Um, so what we came up with there was this concept of a Teams generic account. That's just kind of like our branding for it. Um, and these are essentially common area phones that sit on the desk and the students use it. Um, we don't license these as common area phones because um, we made we made some licensing decisions, uh, but that's essentially that's essentially the concept that we kind of went with there. Um, so their their physical phone sitting on the desk that multiple students used, you know, throughout the day and and interact with to be able to use the service. I think the last part of uh, our um, of this project was migrating our carrier. Um, this also involved migrating from PRI to SIP. Um, and we, you know, so we so as part of this project, we ported all of our phone numbers from AT and T to Segra. Um, it came with a couple of technical challenges too, right? We had to have both. We had to have both of these carriers got kind of plugged into our SPCs, which makes the configuration there kind of complex. 
Um, and we also could not do any HA work on the SBCs until we were down to one carrier. So we ran for uh, probably about a year, maybe a little bit more, um, without the without our SBCs being in an HA pair, which caused problems a couple of times. You know, SBC reboot or we updated or something, and the whole service goes down when you know when you would kind of expect a, um, a, the HA to kind of take over that. So another kind of key decision that our I, that our campus leadership made um, was kind of answering the question of like, does this service require physical phones? Um, and they came back with a resounding no, it does not require physical phones. Um, and they uh, actually gave us the direction to, or gave campus the direction to purchase as few uh, physical phones as possible. Um, and so this was part of that change uh, for clients was that you know, the, the university was not providing them phones. If they felt like they needed a phone, it was their responsibility to go out and buy um, a phone. Uh, you know, it you know, came, came out of their department budget, which kind of slowed down a lot of it. Um, you know, and, and you know, kind of our, our leadership coming back and saying, hey, the, the default method for you to use this new voice service is using it from the Teams app. Uh, that's how that's how we want you to use this. You know, part part of the reason for making this change is to make the service more mobile. And if you tie your phone number to a phone sitting on the desk in your office, it's no longer mobile anymore. Um, so we we ended up at the end of the project with about 300 phones on our campus. I had the actual number later in the later in the deck, but we ended up with about 300 out of about 2100 actual phone number assignments so i think you know what's that about 12 percent or 13 percent or something um we gave folks the choice of four different models one was an audio codes phone which is also our spc vendor and then three poly ccx phones um uh, and that that's that's what folks kind of had to had to buy um had 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 to buy off of so a couple of minutes on how we kind of structured the project. Uh, this is a really, really busy chart. Our project manager came up with this. There's no way I could have come up with this. This is very, very project manager. Uh, but this kind of illustrates kind of in the middle of the circle. Those are the kind of the six or seven technical resources we had assigned to the to the project, you know, in various capacities for various reasons. Uh, it just kind of illustrates all of the um, the stakeholders and um, and the extended project team, all the dependencies. Right, so this this project had a lot of lot of lot of dependencies, a lot of lot of people. Um, and then kind of how we migrated folks. So we we did five waves and a pilot wave. So I guess six. Um, I have that the actual timing in a, in the next slide, but kind of how we went through it. So you know we had a hundred or so pilot pilot wave, and then. We went about a month or so and then really started migrating folks and kind of, kind of started small. And then the last wave was just kind of everybody, you know, kind of everybody that was left. Um, in there, that wave four was an interesting one. That was a wave that we had to really work with folks to schedule. Um, you know, we couldn't just say we're going to move the U. Um, uh, so the, this wave included like our police department. Um, and, uh, you know, some other areas, you know, that you could probably think of that, it, you know, it's really critical that they have as little downtime as possible and, and, um, and, you know, that sort of thing. And, and more critical than just the user saying, I can't have any downtime because, you know, everybody says they can't have any down, downtime. These were people that actually, you know, there were, there was human safety or something like that kind of in play kind of with those folks. And that was a really small wave too. I think that wave was only maybe 50 or so people. Hey, um, um, there's a, hey, Andrew, there's a question that's kind of related to what you were just talking about there in the chat. All right. Uh, um, question, do you have POTS lines? What solutions do you use to address these lines? Uh, so our um, fire alarm panels, elevators, uh, those sorts of lines are still on an old Centrex um, system. That's another project that we have kind of in the pipeline to move those off of the old Centrex system. Uh, so those are actually all still analog, and they were not part of this. Um, they they were not part of this project. Uh, fax lines are in that boat today, um, but we are we have another pro we have a 
a very small project kicking off right actually today or like this version or like this week uh, to migrate all of our fax lines over to VoIP and to something else. Um, so that, so, that, so those will be coming off of the old analog lines. Um, and then the E911 question, um, we, uh, so E911, uh, we, uh, we, do, we don't, we didn't have a good answer for that. Um, so what we are doing is when you sign up for a phone number, you have to tell us the location of your uh, office. And that's, that's what gets supplied to our carrier. Um, if you're not in your office, then our docs say you need to call 911 from your cell phone. Um, it's, it's not a great solution, but it's, but it's what we had. Um, that, that kind of call was made by somebody else so i can't i can't really justify it or re really talk about it any more than that but that's that's kind of that's kind of what we're doing uh what version of call manager were we on i don't know i do not know the answer to that question i apologize for that um and the record the call recording uh our police department bought the audio codes recording solution uh, they're in the process of implementing it now um, i believe it's called smart tap i think um, and they are in the process of uh, implementing it in now. It, it's a Teams certified plug-in or uh, whatever Teams calls those things um, and just plugs right in. And um, I'm assuming it's going to record the calls once they get it all set up. Uh, for those not getting phones, it's probably also probably headsets that calls the computer. Uh, okay, so that question, um, we will, I, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, I'll talk about that a little bit because uh, that was a challenge. Uh, that we had that I actually call out in a later slide. So let me pause on that question um, and uh, I will answer that in a few minutes. Um, so this is kind of what our schedule will look like. Hopefully, hopefully you can see that. So we started this in September of 2020 and then this chart, <coughs> excuse me, sorry. And then this chart runs through August. Um, so just kind of walking through the project schedule. So the first part of the project, pretty significant point period of time from September to April uh, was planning, um, configuring the SBCs, configuring teams, um, uh, those, those sorts of things. Um, and then we did uh, migration waves from last April to the end of June. And then we had a couple of smaller targeted waves kind of after that um, for some for some specialized needs, Wait, waiting on equipment like that's there were there, there, there were some groups that couldn't move as far as the main wave because we were waiting on some equipment and some things like that. Um, and then the next one took us nine months to move from PRI to SIP and change our carriers. Um, I'll kind of leave that there. There was a whole thing with the with our the carrier we were migrating from. Um, I'll just leave that there. Uh, and then we kind of started the cleanup decommissioning of the old system, and that is still ongoing today. We still have not completely shut down call manager uh, because of our fax lines. Um, so that is kind of still ongoing today. Um, I have a fun little tidbit. Uh, so kind of what we did, so this is as of the end of October, um, we have 2,101 active lines and teams, 78 lines still in call manager and all of those are fax lines uh, and we ported 4,100-ish numbers over to our new carrier. Um, that's kind of, kind of what we did as part of the project. Uh, in teams, 100 of those, 2,100 lines are call queues, 45 are auto attendants. Almost 300 are those generic kind of student employee kind of accounts, uh, and we ended up with 261 phones registered in the Teams um, Teams console. And those call queues, those are kind of your like regular like department shared lines, like department main line type, type numbers, right? Somebody calls the Department of Biology, and there's a number for the Department of Biology, and then you call that, and it rings a couple other people in the department for them to answer it. Um, pretty simple kind of shared line kind of type concept. And then those auto attendants are like the press one to talk to somebody, press two to talk to somebody else kind of lines. Um, so some lessons learned uh, from the project. So so a couple of challenges, a couple of challenges here to talk about. So from a technology perspective, so UNCG, UNCG actually implemented teams backwards. Um, I like to talk about this because I think because I, I think it's kind of looking back on it 
two years later, it's kind of funny. Um, so if you read Microsoft's documentation, you're supposed to implement Teams with like direct message chat first and let folks kind of learn, learn the UI, learn how it works, um, you know, that sort of thing. Then you're supposed to introduce uh, some Teams. Um, to, 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 to let people get used to the collaborative nature of it and working with files and the integrations and all that stuff. And then after that, you're supposed to introduce meetings. And then after that, you're supposed to introduce voice. Um, so we did it completely backwards and went with voice first. So what that did is that we got a lot of questions about the rest of Teams that we were not ready to answer um, at, at the time, right? We got a lot of questions about the chat. We got a lot of questions about like the org chart functionality where, you know, you could see your org chart from within Teams because um, our data wasn't quite right for that. And, um, you know, we got a lot of questions about using the Teams functionality and using the file share. So we got, we got a lot of questions about Teams in general that we weren't ready to answer. And, and our answer was just, well, you can't use that. Uh, we only use Teams for voice, which was not a great answer. Um, but, you know, but it's what our, you know, kind of leadership decided our answer was going to be, and it just didn't really kind of fly very well with our clients. Um, the second one is UNCG had historically not had a strong presence in any other M365 technology. So our emails and Google, our cloud storage, our cloud storage solutions are Google Drive and Box. Um, you know, so we, we introduced this, this Microsoft collaboration platform and teams with none of the other things behind it. Um, I mean, even to the point of, um, we have kind of your mileage may vary, uh, experience with things in M365 that generate email. Sometimes the email ends up in the exchange mailbox that nobody can see. And then sometimes it finds its way into Google. So we have some, you know, we have some, some variants and, and those sorts of things. And it's just cause we had never, we, we didn't have any other investment in any of the other M365 collaboration technologies. Um, like I said, at the beginning of the presentation, that's changing cause we're, we, you know, we're starting a, or we're in the middle of a project to move our email and cloud storage into M365. And I feel like Teams was a little bit of a driver for that, but um, it, we, you know, when we, when we did this project, we didn't have any other, any other real presence in any of this stuff. Um, so some client challenges. Uh, we made a lot of assumptions um, and that were not uh, that were not good assumptions. Uh, and this goes to the question that uh, Vincent asked about headsets. We we made the assumption that since we started all of this in April of 2021, you know, folks had been our faculty, our staff had been working from home since March of 2020. And you know, so we made an assumption that folks were familiar with virtual meeting technologies and and had things like headsets and had things like, you know, you know, webcams. You know, ha had the the basic knowledge or technology pieces to to um, to not make this this switch as as very uh, impactful as we thought as as we thought. Um, and that turned that turned out to be wrong. Um, to this day, I don't know what people were doing from March of 2020 to April of 2021 when we did Teams because they sure weren't meeting virtually because we talked to people about Teams and we talked to people about Zoom and they looked at us like we had three heads. Like, I don't, I have no idea what, what people were doing to talk to other people during, during, during those 13 months. Um, uh, and the, the, the same kind of goes with headsets. We kind of made an assumption that folks would have a basic headset because, you know, you, they've had to teach virtually for, you know, almost a year at that point. And it's just people didn't have headsets. So, you know, we, we moved people over to teams and, you know, immediately started getting the help desk tickets about call quality being, being bad. And, you know, the person they're talking to can't hear them. And, you know, you know, this, you know, and you talk to them and, they don't have a headset or they have a, a webcam that was, you know, out of the $10 bin at Walmart and it was just picking up everything behind them. And, you know, so you, so, so you couldn't hear them. I mean, you, you could, you, you, you couldn't hear on calls. So it was just a whole support thing, you know, after, you know, after we had moved folks, I mean, we were still kind of catching up from that. Like I had a, 
I had a meeting today about a new about a new set of headsets that we're going to offer to try to standardize on some of this stuff. Um, uh, and so it was just, you know, just, you still 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 kind of fighting that a little bit. Um, and then the second thing about clients is this this project moved a lot of people's cheese right we we took away their their physical phone and told them you know they needed to use phone service from their computer and there were a lot of people that said absolutely not i can't do that and you know and it was just you know we, we took a technology that you know like i said earlier had been fundamentally like unchanged you know for for 50 years probably you know picking up a handset dialing somebody and talking to them and now you got to do all that virtually from from a computer and then from a project perspective on challenges, um, we had we had a lot of issues with data. Uh, I mean, we had been on call manager for a long time, um, so we had incomplete, outdated data. Um, right, folks, you know, with, with with phone service based on a physical phone sitting on a desk, you know, somebody leaves a position, and the next person comes in and sits right back at the desk and keeps using the phone like nothing had ever happened. I um, mean, te teams, right? A number has to be assigned to a person or a, a user account, not a device that just can move between people. So trying to figure out who actually, you know, who actually belonged to a phone number um, took a lot of time and we still probably only got it about 70 or 75 percent right and it's just you know it's just a a a symptom of of being on the same system for a long time and just data just not being accurate um we also moved the service to operational way too soon uh, but what i mean by that is we kind of took the service out of project mode you know out of like you know like all all hands on deck you know, project mode and moved it to an operational state where, you know, we lost resources on the project, right? I, I was one of them, um, you know, being the, being the kind of the architect that designed a lot of it, you know, I had to move on to other things and that, 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 that caused some issues with the people that were left to run it, you know, I, you know, the, you know, and so we, 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 we moved it over to that operational state way too soon. And after we did that, within a couple of months, we were moving it back into a project mode because it just got kind of out of hand. Um, and then last, uh, I mean, I feel like this is within any technology project. It just, it took us longer than we thought. We, th we thought this was going to be wrapped up by the summer of 2021. Um, and it wasn't wrapped up until it was the carrier switch wasn't done until uh, February of this year. And like I said, we we still have pieces of Cisco that we have to that we have to decommission. All right, so we kind of talked about the first two already. Um, we shift to the project operations too soon and making sure the data is accurate. Um, and then. And then communication is kind of the last one there. We did a lot of communication. We met with departments. We we met with we met individually with a lot of departments. UNCG has 220 or so departments, and I would guess we probably had 100 or 115 client meetings. Uh, right? We had some departments come together, you know that that sort of thing. But we 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 really tried to meet with every department to try to get their use cases and get their setups and the, it wasn't really about the individual lines right those those are easy it was more about these shared lines these auto attendants you know th those sorts of things to to to, to make sure you know that, that we had it right um you know this is this is one of the this was a classic you know we spent 90 percent of the time doing 10 percent of the of the numbers right you know i feel like that's probably pretty common across a lot of IT projects or a lot of projects in general, you spend 90% of your time doing 10% of the work. And that was exactly the way you know, that this was with meeting with people and really trying to make sure, you know, all, all that stuff was, was, was correct. And so what went well? So we, we, we did have a couple of things that, that did go fairly well. Uh, we did hire a partner to help us with this. Um, that kind of relationship, I felt like, went really well. Um, partner was very, very knowledgeable on making this this specific switch from Cisco to Teams. They they had done it several times before with other people, um, and um, you know, felt like that went really well. Um, this was a catalyst for changes. Uh, you know, I've said it a couple of times. You know, felt like part of the reason that we are that we are moving from um, 
Google Google and Box to M365 is because of this a little bit. Um, there's a lot of other reasons, but you know this I feel like plays a little bit a part, a l- little bit of a part in that. Um, it also caused some areas to modernize their own business processes, some processes that were that were dependent on you know a physical phone device sitting on their desk, right? Some of that, some some of that stuff had to had to um, ha, you know ha, had had to change uh, with the faxes, you know this. We have a separate project going on, that, going on with that, but with the faxes, that has really been true. We have seen a lot of departments come up and say, you know, since we did this, you know, we've also looked at this process over here that was dependent on somebody faxing us something, and we've changed that process to be an email now or something. Yeah, so so, so, so this has caused some departments to relook at how they do things. Um, and then, I, and then uh, you know, I was talking about on the last slide about the client meetings. Um, Thought that went well. We we got we got a, we we got some good feedback on that, um, on meeting with them, and and that's kind of led us to how we're running the M365 project too. We're doing a lot more meeting with clients, making sure we have business cases, making sure we have you know all of those things that we need to to make that successful as well. And that was it. Um, if there are any questions, you can put them in the chat, or I don't know if we can take people off mute or not, but um, you can put them in the chat and we can we can talk. Yeah, so let me just do this real quick. Meeting options. And allow Mike for attendees. And then, oh, it doesn't look like I can save it, but if people raise their hand, I can I'll let them do the, their mic. So there looks like it's a question in there right now. Creative point jabber. Uh, so we did not deploy jabber um, ever. Uh, that was one of the things. I mean, uh, I'm not real sure why. Um, so I mean, I was kind of, I, I was not part of the voice services group or or had anything to do really with voice services until it was shifted over to Teams. So I don't I don't know what the historical reasoning there was on why we never went to jabber. Um, so we only did IP communicator, and it was only for select for select use cases. Um, even e- even when we went remote, um, the, those use cases didn't we we didn't expand the IP communicator um, offering at all. Um, how do you handle shared lines? We have our facilities line on 37 phones, uh, so we moved all of those to uh, call queues in Teams. Um, that won't work for 37 phones. There's a max of 20 uh, in Teams. Um, but uh, um, but yeah, we 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 didn't have any near that large. Um, I kind of mentioned it back on a slide about the SBCs where it calls route to, to to Teams and a couple other smaller services. Uh, we moved our like call center functionality, our like true call center functionality, to Genesis. Um, and so our, our really, really heavily used shared lines, you, know, you think about like financial aid, um, our uh, IT help desk, um, our cashier's office, our registrar's office, we, you know, the, you know, the year they get, you know, I think the last numbers I pulled for um, cashiers was 2000 calls last month, right? So like that, that, that service, we moved to a true call center solution, um, but there's only, th- Four departments in that, uh, but so I mean, so, so so something like that, you you may have you may kind of have to go outside of Teams, uh, but I mean, I I would I would say Teams isn't really designed to handle that anyway, right? There's a lot more functionality if you have a true call center scenario in something like Genesis, um, you know, because you get all the re, all the reporting, all of the there, there's there, there there's there's a lot in a service like Genesis that is not in Teams really for you know high-end call centers. Do you regret the number port to the new SIP vendor? You're talking about like, uh, so no, no, I don't. I, 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 I don't regret that. The, the, the new provider was not the, the new vendor was not the problem. The old vendor was the problem. Um, and if you go back in the slide deck and see who that old vendor was, you probably guess that they were the problem. But it was not, it was not the new vendor. The, the switch was fairly easy. I mean, the, the switch, once we got the old vendor to where they needed to be was fairly easy. I mean, it was a, we did a, we did the, the main port of our numbers 
out of that 4,100 numbers, probably 3,800 of them or something like that in one morning in about 30 minutes, right? Like, so once, once all the paperwork was done and all of the, the handholding was done, it was really, really easy. Um, it just, it just took that long to get the old vendor to work with us basically. Uh, yeah, we are using direct routing. Um, E911, uh, we pass the physical, the, um, we pass the assigned location of the user to, to, to emergency services. So if that is your office on the second floor of our science building, then that's what gets passed. And we tell users, if you're not in that location, to use your cell phone to call 911, which, I mean, they probably are anyway, because, um, you know, they're not sitting at their desk. Uh, but, you know, so we, we tell them to use, you know, like the phone app on your iPhone and not Teams, you know, to call, to call, to call 911. I think I hit them all. Yeah, and everybody can come off mute as well. I did open that up, so. Um, Caden, I don't know if you're around, if you can uh, put the link to the survey. Yep, I will do it now. Thank you. Uh, yes, yeah, so we are using um, we are using uh, te Teams compliant handsets. Uh, that is very important. If you call um, Microsoft and say I'm having audio problems and you're not using a Teams ha handset or Teams certified headset, that's going to be the first thing they tell you to do. Um, uh, I said we're using Poly, uh, so we have a, a line of Poly headphones or headsets and Poly um, physical phones. Uh, so we we're, we're we're revamping a lot of that today. Um, I, you know that's what I was doing before this meeting was looking at a lot of that stuff. Um, but yeah, we were we're using Polly's Polly's line of team certified stuff. Um, yeah, I I to, to finish off that question. Yeah, I like them. Their support's pretty good. Um, Managing phones, so that's a little different. So when when you put a phone, when you put a when you register a phone in Teams, Teams takes over the management of it. I mean, we we try to think of it in terms of like endpoint management. It's essentially an endpoint. Um, so we we try to match the policies we have configurable in Teams to our other endpoint management policies. Um, it you know they obviously don't match one for one, and there obviously aren't near as many of them for the team's phones, but things like the device passcode and like stuff like that, we, we tried to, we, we basically took our endpoint management policy and said, we're gonna do this over here. So that way we don't have to write another policy. Are you requiring user support to purchase from a certain product list for, yeah, so for the hard phones, yes, they can only purchase the poly phones that we have um, said that they can purchase. Uh, if they purchase something else, then it's not going to work, and that's what we tell them, right? You know, here's our list. You should have bought off this list, basically. And that is um, primarily because of our network. We have 802.1x on the wire on our network. Um, so, you know, we had to craft specific authentication rules and all that kind of stuff to make the phones work. So we weren't going to offer poly and audio codes and Yeelink and, you know, everything else and generic SIPs and all. We, we, we weren't going to do that. So we offered one, you know, kind of one brand with three models. So if you had to do it again and only change one thing, what would that be? Um, I would not make the assumption that people knew what we were talking about when we talked about talking to somebody on your computer. Um, I think that was the biggest flaw in everything we did was we went into it assuming people would know what we were talking about when we walked in there and said, you're going to start talking to people through your computer. Um, you know, we, you know, like I said on that, on that slide, uh, you know, we, we went in thinking a year into COVID that folks would know what we were talking about and they didn't know what we were talking about. And like I said earlier, I, I still don't know how people were talking to other people for a year, but it's, you know. <laughs> um, I would also, from a technology perspective, I think we we discounted um, calling plans and porting our numbers to Microsoft too early. Um, I would love to go back and look at that again because uh, it simplifies the architecture a whole lot. Like you don't have to have SBCs. You, I mean, you don't have to have anything on prem. Um, uh, so I, I would take another look at that uh, and make sure that we made that for for good reasons. 
um, I guess if you know from from a technology perspective. Locking when user walks away from the desk. We always see. Uh, um, we, so we don't enforce a uh, lock on the phones. Um, that was one of them things that very, like I was saying earlier, we tried to match it to our employee management policy. That's one of the things we didn't match it. And we justified it on the level of change we were introducing. We didn't want to also introduce that change. And our old phones, you could walk up and, and access any of that information anyway, right on the on 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 the Cisco system. Um, so we just we justified it by keeping the service at the same level. Um, you know, that's that's not not a very good thing from a security perspective. Um, but like I said, just the amount of change we were doing, uh, we 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 didn't want to introduce having to like unlock a phone to that as well. Uh, since you convert all analog, all analog besides fax to VoIP, no, we still have that ongoing. We have uh, right at 600 Centrex lines on campus that feed fire alarm panels and elevators and those sorts of things. Um, that's going to be another project in the next year or two to finish converting all of those things to VoIP. Um, the analog lines that we did have, we did have some analog lines in Cisco that we moved over to Teams, and we did those with converters with. Um, uh, we bought them from Audio Codes because Audio Codes was our was who we bought our SBCs from. Um, I forget what they're called, but yeah, they're just I'm sure they're just like the ATAs. Um, they're just you know different brand. Yep. Somebody yeah, media it. packs. Thank you. Yep, media <clears throat> packs. Yep, that's what they are. All right, then um, Caden did put the uh, link to the feedback survey. So if you can take a few moments to fill out the, the feedback survey, we greatly appreciate it. Uh, it looks like there's a new message. Oh, it says yeah, uh, they're going in the same direction. Awesome. If there's no more questions, again, everybody can come off mute. If you don't want to type um, completely up to you. If not, we'll end it here and we'll see everybody tomorrow afternoon. I'd like to thank you and I would just ask a quick question is, are you available for any offline questions if, outside of this? Because uh, we're looking at potentially moving this way. We've got 10,000 phones though. So. Yep, sure. So I went back to the second slide. There's my email address. Yeah, you feel, feel free to email me. I'll answer whatever I can. Thank you, sir. Yep. All right then, everybody have a great night and uh, we'll see everybody tomorrow afternoon. Andrew, thanks again. You were awesome. Thank you, Thank you guys.